Sorry. Um, our next case, we have a 72-year-old male who um, was cleaning out the bats in his um, barn and fell off the ladder about 15 feet. He presented to an outside hospital with left chest and back pain. At the outside hospital, he was diagnosed with a left pneumothorax on chest x-ray. He had a chest tube placed. He was hemodynamically stable. He denied any loss of consciousness, um, and because it was a trauma, he was transferred to UVA for further care. His past medical history included hypertension, hypopedemia, past surgical history, he had a lumbar disc fusion. His family history was not contributory. He was married, um, was accompanied by his wife. He did use alcohol daily. He said one to two glasses of wine. He denied any tobacco or illicit drug use. Um, medications mostly for his hyperlipidemia and hypertension. He wasn't allergic to anything. Um, blood pressure was stable on arrival and he was not tachycardic. He was alert and oriented, could answer all questions appropriately. His abdomen was soft and non tender. He had no flank ecchymosis or tenderness on either side. Um, labs, his creatinine was slightly elevated at 1.4. However, we did not have a baseline, so we were not sure what his baseline creatinine would be. That would put his GFR around 50. His white count was elevated to 17 and his somatocrit was 44. So as part of our trauma workup here at UVA, if you're stable and you've had a trauma, you get a CT. <laughs> um, as you'll notice, he's got quite a bit of subcutaneous air, but again, he had a pneumothorax for which he'd had a chest tube already placed. He also had some TP uh, transfers process fractures as well, so neuro surgery was involved. So, it, first thing you'll notice is that he seemed to have. His right kidney is not so healthy. Yeah, and interestingly, he had no pain or pathology that we knew of on the right side, but that's where he was uh, planning everything on the left side. We just go farther down. We, um, they do a three phase CT for uh, traumas to look at the delayed imaging. We have contrast, a little bit of blood in the collecting system. But you'll notice that there is contrast excitization going immediately from the kidney. Okay. Then we have... Any, do they see the ureter at any point? Well, that's actually a very good question and answered better on this slide. They do see the ureter on the left side. However, we could not get any contrast and did not see any contrast going down the right side. Hmm. Again, a lot of subcutaneous there. Yeah. All right, so we have a 17-year-old male with findings concerning for a right renal collecting system injury. It's an odd injury. Let's put the phone I assume there was crump perfusion of that kidney? Mm -hmm. There was no delayed nephrogram. Right, so our artery is intact. Mm -hmm. um, and I assume there's blood. They assume there's some contusion effect. So the question yes. is, uh, you have leakage of okay. urine. Uh, but I'm trying to understand a trauma that's sufficiently forceful to literally tear the earth. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling with it. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to know at this point, he's stable otherwise? He's otherwise stable, yes. This is where I think a retrograde uh, study would be extremely helpful. We completely agree, especially as we were not sure what was going on with that ureter. So we took him to the OR for cystoscopy with right retrograde. Um, and here's a picture of our retrograde. I actually performed this. So this is, um, I was able to, um, I, I didn't show the images, but I did have some uh, showing contrast going all the way up the ureter, which is intact, so I fed up my green. And I could get contrast to go in the collecting system, but I also got contrast going into a large collection. So, so we have a disrupt, we have a, what should I say, a laceration of the ureter, but you have continuity. Mm -hmm. Exactly. While you were there, were you able to get a wire up? Excellent question. I could not get a wire to pass into the collecting system. I could get a wire to pass. Right. What do you think about that collecting system acutely? Whether it's an EBJ that this was, you know, you get into that bubble system or in school. Could it be a duplicated system? Maybe. Um, it's an odd injury. Um, it's, it's, it, it, it's also smooth. You, know, you expect extravagation into top, soft tissue not mm -hmm. having a collection system mm -hmm. like that. So something's funny. I'm you know, trying to understand what trick you're throwing at me. Um, <laughs> it's really funny. And, and you've got blunted calluses, but I, I assume, is this from the retrograde? It is from the retrograde. Because you don't have a lot of 
you have some extravasation into soft mm -hmm. tissue, but you seem to have natural planes there. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so I'm not I'm not certain. I mean, I I feel much. I would sleep much better having a stent across this injury. Yes. So um, to get to Bill's question, is this a was he born with a um, bifurcated kidney or duplicated kidney? Is this just an upper pole moiety? But it's, it was a, it's not a UPJ obstruction because it looks like we're dealing with two separate renal pelvises. Right? It, it was it was very confusing, and our, our uh, we we sat there for quite a while in the OR saying, I'm so, not I'm not so, sure what so I'm looking what at. What I've learned is if you can't get a wire from below, mm -hmm. your next attempt is to get a wire from above. Mm -hmm. So I think, and you, if you've got extravasation, you probably need to divert this urine. And so therefore, where I think I would go next is to perk probably the upper pole because it's a straighter shot, uh, with the hope that the radiologist is slick and can get a wire down from above there, put a stent through, and then go home and sleep and have a glass of wine. I could, we, um, I said that she would do since he had multiple transfer process fractures, um, neurosurgery actually had him on spine precautions, and we could not do anything but have him supine. Um, they may have been able to throw him prone, but they weren't crazy about that. And since we were um, there in the main OR doing this, and we were concerned and wanted to know, make sure that wasn't a disruption in his UPJ, we actually um, decided to do a renal exploration and try to figure out where the uh, injury was. Okay, um, I mean, that, I, I didn't see a huge hematoma there because mm -hmm. the danger is you explore that if the hematoma and what did you see? Did you do this robotically? Or? No, no, we um, actually had to do a subcostal incision so that we could keep him in the supine position. Huh. And so you basically rolled the bowel over? Mm -hmm. We rolled the bowel over, and then when we opened Rotus, there was no blood, fortunately, but there was a lot of um, urine and contrast that came at us. Which is not a surprise. Mm -hmm. But that, uh, all right, I mean, the, to me, the danger of the approach you took was if there was also a, 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 a arterial component, you could have turned a stable case into an unstable case. Into a nephrectomy. And I, I would have talked to the neurosurgeons a little more, and we somehow brace them and turn them over somehow. But anyway, you did what you did, and you found a lot of fluid, and you sucked the fluid out, and then you were faced with... What do I do next? Yes. And at first, when we were looking at the ureter and the renal pelvis, it looked normal, and we could not find, figure out where all this contrast had come from until we took the ureter and almost turned it over and looked in the underside of his renal pelvis had a large hole in it, pretty much blown out. It was just a very interesting place. We tried to take a picture. It didn't turn out very well. But here's um, the <clears throat> best loop. I have it around the ureter. Actually, um, this right here is his renal pelvis, and if we tried to flip it over, there's a large defect right there. And, and you clearly did the circumstances did the right call. Um, if, if he had not had transverse processes or if there was a reason, I mean, I, I understand what you do, mm -hmm. but if, had that not been ex excluded factor, I still probably would have gone to the perk for the upper pole and drop the wire because even with that Gravitation, all that would have resolved. Yes, you would have had some scar tissue in the tone, but if you could have tra traversed that with a stent, mm -hmm. uh, I think we would have saved uh, the equation. This was much more fun. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, and, and obviously, did you repair it? We you? did. We did do a primary repair. With a stent across it? We did, and that was actually one of the most difficult parts of the case. I feel like that was not going to be easy to do. No, it wasn't. We actually had to stick a needle through the ureter and feed in the stent both ways that way. Did you put the upper pole in first and then down below? Or? We actually went the upper, the down below first. But then you had trouble stuffing it into the... Yes, and we had to use another wire and go through one of the little holes and then try to get that's it into there. That's, 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 that's true. difficult to do. Mm -hmm. It was very tricky. And in retrospect, after we'd spent so much time doing that, we had said, I really wish we would have been able to, to just get a stent across this because it wasn't a UPJ disruption. I think, I mean, yes, you did a nice job and that's everything went as well, but... It would have yeah. a lot easier if you could have done. But then if you had gone from above and parked him and you couldn't get the wire through, you were going to stop doing this. Yes. If, if the tear was in the renal pelvis, why couldn't you get the wire through the ureter? That's an excellent question. We tried for a long time to try to get it, but it kept it's going out that king. defect. There's no king for the urinal. King, king, or, or, you know, you can't steer the wire once it's up that high. So you're stuck with the angle that comes up. You probably tried a glide wire, you probably tried one. Center, and we tried it, uh, an angled 
what's happening. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, from above, you can see you can you can steer it much more easily from above. Twist. That's why I said perking this and going from above. I think you would have dramatically increased your likelihood of success. But are you, would you have been, been unable to place him from the following day? That's an excellent question. We did not explore that. And, and the other question is, uh, when you said uh, transfer of processes, did he have fractures on the right? I don't remember actually which side he was on. I just it makes you wonder. I mean, yeah. the idea that you know someone falls 15 feet and, and he's older than he said uh, to get a pneumothorax, multiple rib fractures. The first thing I'm thinking of when I when I hit that ground is, oh shit, my spleen. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's got no splenic injury, which is a shock. Mm -hmm. So he must have it must have been a tumbling injury where he got contusions on both sides. Mm -hmm. I think the comment is, is right on the, it's a transverse problem. They assumed he was had an unstable spine? They, here's the thing about when we hit UVA trauma workups. So they do a full spine, and normally for a spine to be totally cleared, they knew he had transverse process factor, but not only does the um, radiologist, the um, resident read it, but the attending has to read it as well, and then the neurosurgeon attending has to sign off before they're released from spines. Um, and so we did not have all that so data. He was in the OR for another reason? He was in the OR simply for a retrograde in the main OR. And we called neurosurgery to talk to them about positioning and what we were allowed to do. And I, we probably should have done an attending to attending discussion instead That's of always a, useful. Yeah. I think your point is excellent. Um, I mean, you're stuck in the OR and you're told you can't do this. Mm -hmm. I think you're driving at what's the urgency of getting it done today versus right. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you get a continuity, you've established continuity, so you don't have an avulsion. Well, well, well we have continuity. Well, well, you had, know it's we not constructed yes. because you get constant, but you haven't got a bridge. Right. Your, your yeah. comment is that you're always going to. It's easier today than it is tomorrow as it begins to organize. But did you need to do what you did mm -hmm. on that point and could have waited for a clearance in six hours? Yeah. yeah. I, I think you're he was, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, he was asleep. We were there. Is it two in the morning or what? Um, it was. It wasn't two in the morning, but it was early in the morning. So there's no reason for a back to get you alive. <laughs> I had the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he got away with it, and yeah. uh, it's a nice case. So well he um, he did well. He was success. <laughs> he was discharged home on five uh, post op day five. He was uh, stayed for six weeks. Um, fault was that he had a normal renal ultrasound. He was normal tensive and doing very oh, well. Okay. Don't tell me it's a normal renal ultrasound. We had a duplicated system here. So what did it look like? It wasn't a duplicated system. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Look good. It wasn't a duplicated system. So all that looks so how did you explain the captain? I don't really have an idea except that it Gerotus somehow maybe So it really was a pseudo capsule. It really was a pseudo capsule. Okay. Mm -hmm. We found that and uh, we found no evidence of a five five year or anything like that. It a looked like that was the time frame between his fall and when you imaged it was what? Uh, probably about ten hours. Uh, anyway. No, we didn't have any good explanation for it. Anyway, you know, it was a success. <laughs>